Welcome back to another video. Today we are here at Faber. Um, I'm here with Song. We have a bit of a different interview style. We have him on camera and uh, we have the whole setup like it's an, a CNN interview. Um, Song, thanks so much for letting me film your Imonda SLR. It's an amazing color. I really like the bike. Can you perhaps uh, let us know what bike is this and what group set? Hi everybody. Um, my name is Song. I have the Trek Imonda SLR 2021 Project 1. The color is uh, amethyst and brush chrome. And it's, um, I just got it in September this year. Yeah. The, the, group, eight, uh, the group set is Shimano Durace R9120 hydraulic disc brakes. So in the Project 1 scheme, there is a lot of colors you can choose from. Uh, it's a lot of customization. But I was more attracted to the a bit more high-end colors. Uh, initially, it was the liquid alchemy color, which I saw in the track store. And that really like, caught my eye. Um, but they were asking a bit too much for the paint scheme. I think it was like 1.2k USD just for that special paint. And I came across this uh, amethyst color from another YouTuber, and he had a, he had just received his frame, and this paint cost 600 USD. So it was 600 discount. I will take it lah. So I got it from Technology at uh, Jalan Bukit Merah. It the frame set was 6.5k, and the rest of the parts I just picked up from Carousel and elsewhere on the internet. So my crank set is uh, 5236. It's a 165mm crank length and the cassette behind is 1125. My wheel sets are from Pinnacle. They are 55mm deep and they come with the hubs from C uh, Chris King. They are CKR45Ds. Yes, it's a local company um, and I heard about it from friends of my cycling group and they, it, has, it comes with very high reviews. La. So I was very attracted because of the CK hubs initially. Like it's a childhood dream of mine to always have CK hubs at least once in my life. Okay. So since I had the chance to, to get a pair of uh, wheel sets myself, why not? I mean, on the market, there's only like pro probably only MVs come with Chris Kings, but I was kind of bored of MVs. So I don't want to try something new. Uh. And the pinnacle, because you can choose your own decals, you can choose your own up to the, like, the rim depth. Yeah, I wanted it specifically 55, just because it's my lucky number. Right. So the wheel sets are 2.6k SGD. With the Chris King helps. With the Chris King helps. Okay, so uh, for the performance-wise, I would say it's amazing. I've been mind blown so far on my probably 1,000 km's on it. I mean, my first 1,000 km on it. And uh, mind you, I've only been on it for about a month. La. And I would say it holds its speed very well once you touch 35, 40 above. On the climbs, it's decent. But I, will, I have nothing much to benchmark it against because I have upgraded from Novatech, you can say cheap hubs. Right. Yeah, so I not really a good benchmark for me. Okay. Yeah. But on the flats, I am confident to say that it will blow a lot of competition away. So I'm using the Burke Lupina. It's the padded saddle. I got it direct from Europe. Um, it's a 132mm in width. So I got it because I was inspired by a YouTube video. That uh, where this YouTuber actually he also bought the same frame and he also had the same saddle and I feel like aesthetically this saddle looks so sexy I just had to have it I just had to have it okay so my handlebars are from Trek um, they are the Bondrega VRC RSL bars so it's the it's designed as a all in one to be a company piece for the Imonda so it comes in forty from thirty eight all the way to forty four mm widths I have the forty and then with, with the 90 length stem. Yeah, because it's all in one. Uh, so I, I tried the 100, but I felt it's a bit too long. So in the shop, they have a few options. Uh. Like they, they, they had a whole lineup of uh, Imondas, SLRs with the one piece handlebars. And they, I just tried around and played with it. And I just thought in the future, if I want to slam my stem, uh, 90 would probably be easier. So my height is 169 cm, and the size of the bike is uh, 52. Oh, the bike performs like a dream. Uh. Honestly, um, like I, I, I did try to put my bike on sale for, on Carousel and I got offers slightly above my cost price and I still rejected them. So I think that says enough about the, how happy I am with the bike. Uh. It's, so the Monda is an all-rounder bike, but it was originally their climbing bike, but for 2021, I think 2020, they uh, changed the frame shape to be more aero, so it become more all-rounded. Something like the, the tarmac, I would say together with the wheels, it kind of blurs the lines for me, but I would say that definitely um, as a whole package, it can maintain its speed very well, uh, above 40, 45. Yeah, so the bike, I felt is a bit overweight. I was actually targeting below 6.8 kg. I 
would say is probably due to the wheels it's a bit on the heavier side due to the 55 rim uh, depth and also maybe the CK hubs I could have chosen maybe a lighter carbon, uh, carbon TI or extra light hubs which I am thinking of trying out in the future lah. yeah oh man if I can recommend the Imonda to everybody I would lah. Yeah. yeah I love the bike yeah no plan of getting the Aero Madone I would get the Madon if the Monda was not as fast as it should be. <laughs> so I'm running the Cos uh, Vittoria Corsas Speeds 2.0 Graphenes. I have to say they are the fastest tires I've ever tried. La. Yeah, so on the Corsa Speeds, when you're rolling at about 35, 40, you can hear this whoosh sound that makes you want to go faster. I'm not sure is it the hubs. I don't think it's the hubs, but it's this definitely the tires uh, because from my feedback from other friends that use the Corsas they say the same thing about the, about the Corsa speeds so we'll move on to the Instagram questions uh, if you guys want to ask me more questions on for my next interview just follow me on Instagram and uh, I'll, I'll usually put an Insta story so that you guys can ask me questions uh, for the bike that I want to interview next so we've got a couple of Instagram questions here. We got a question here from I'm slow shit. <laughs> his, his, his question is, uh, I don't know if you can answer this. Uh. His question is, sponsor me, Ken? <laughs> uh, sure. If you call me daddy, yeah. <laughs> uh, next question from Javen here. Why buy a track when they are so heavy? Honestly, um, weight wasn't my first concern with this bike. La. I mean, if I want to go full weight weenie, I could have, but sometimes a bit of looks, especially if the frame really speaks to you. I think that's more important. Like you want to ride a bike that you love. Teh Yao asks you this. Can you fly with this bike? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> with my current power output, I believe it's, I'm not maximizing the potential of the bike, but it definitely wants to go faster. La. Jack the Sailor and C.CH183 asks a similar question. Uh, it's a two-part question. I'll ask the first one first. Why Dura Ace Mechanical and not the I2? Okay, so initially when I was uh, waiting for the frame to arrive, I was shopping around for group sets and uh, there were no, there, there were the I2 around, but um, the prices were so inflated due to the COVID inflation and uh, with all the global, sh global shortages and all that. So I was looking at Altegra Mechanical and I realized this bike doesn't deserve Altegra. It should be minimum Dura Ace just to complete that look, you know? And I'm not really, have not fallen for the DI2 craze and AXS craze yet. La. Have you tried uh, an electronic group set? No. Am I missing out? You are missing out big time, my friend, because, <laughs> well, people can disagree with me. You guys let me know in the comments, right? Uh, I've been using a mechanical group set for the longest time. I recently changed to the, the electronic group set because it looks cleaner. I don't have cables running everywhere. Uh, and I personally think it is, uh, I think it's much more easier to maintain that you don't have to keep adjusting your freaking barrel adjuster uh, even though it's a small thing but um, it, it's so much I mean now the trend everyone is having the I2 electronic group set and I think the shifting is much easier I mean it's it's a first world problem uh, and I think you're missing out on that and I will never ever go back to mechanical <laughs> that's my opinion so what, what's, what's your response to that? Fair enough I think everyone is entitled to their own opinion but then again it's something else to charge it's something else to go wrong like let's say there's more more chance to go to for things to go wrong with electronic than mechanical with mechanical you know it's limited to just certain issues but if let's say something goes wrong electronically i think it's more problems to come yes uh so talking about the shifters also like the, the individually the parts for di2 are generally more expensive because there's more tech in them um so like in 10 years time if i'm still riding this bike I'm happy that it's mechanical because I know that there'll be parts that I can replace it with. Good luck with replacing your DI2 parts. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Uh, second part of the question is does the shifting feel worse with the hidden cables? Okay, so this is a good question. Um, so when I was getting my bike, um, I, because of the integrated handlebar, I was worried that the mechanical um, hoses and cables would interfere with the steering and all that. Uh, but my salesperson at track he has the same bike and the same handlebar and he reassured me that he's used mechanical group sets and he's fine with it so i entrusted the bike to him i said okay you can watch over it and build it for me and it turns out it's fine la. honestly i it, i can't tell that 
it's, it's, there's no hindrance at all. Uh, last question of the day. Uh, from TC Fairweather, right? He says that your spaces look ugly. Slam it. Uh, good question, bro. So eventually, I do plan to slam the stem. Just that I have taken out one big spacer already. I'm left with three, no, two small spacers and one big spacer left to go. And once I do a proper bike fit and get used to the feel and, and handling of the bike, I'll definitely do it. Stay, stay tuned for that. That wraps up the video for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, do follow me on Instagram to see behind the scenes photos and also photos of uh, bikes that uh, are going to be released before I release them on YouTube. And you guys get to ask me any questions for my future interview. Song, thank you so much for letting me film your bike. And thanks for, for hosting me in your nice house, man, and doing this whole interview. Something very different. Hey, no worries, man. It's a pleasure having you. Yeah. Um, thank you, YouTube. Enjoy the video. All right, let's go riding, bro. <laughs> let's go, let's go. Track Modern SLR. Oh my god, it's a it's a it's a it's a Imonda. Okay, let me let me retake. Okay. Welcome back to another video today. We are here at shit, where's your house? Ah? <laughs> What's the name of this thing? Favor. Yeah, Favor? Yeah, Favor. Okay, sorry, let me take that again. Hi everybody. Um I'm the track Imonda SLR 2021. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, okay, okay. Now nah, nah, I get what you mean. Yeah. It, unless you say it too many times. Yeah. 55 mm. What? <laughs> Did I repeat that already? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. I, I can visit say bon, bon. No, no, no. Bond. 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 Bond.